What's up everybody, it's Pastor Noah here and I'm glad that you've joined me for another week of virtual online junior church and I'm excited to get to the story that we have for us today. And so, before we do that, I wanna ask you, do you remember our theme song? Do you think you can do it for me before I try to do it? Ready, go. I can't, I can't hear you. Can, can you sing it louder? Why can't, oh, oh yeah, that's right. We're not in the same room together. I keep forgetting about that. You know, sometimes I just get so tired of, of talking to a camera. I just really want to talk to you guys and be in the same room with you. But I'm so glad that we're able to look at God's word together. So our theme song is, da na 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 explorers. da na 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 explorers. It doesn't really matter how many da na na nas you add, as long as that word that you're saying there is, Explorers, because we are looking at God's Word together. So if you've got your Explorer gear, you can put it on or make sure you have it right there next to you. I got my hat and I got my trusty binoculars, so that way things that are far away can seem closer. Anyway, before, uh, or let's jump into the story that we have for us today. Uh, so we kind of have to set it up a little bit. We've been traveling with the nation of Israel, which is God's people. Um, over time, we've, we've followed them all the way from Egypt, all the way through the wilderness, and now into the promised land. And over that time, we've seen God bless them because they have chosen, or when they have chosen, to obey Him. But I have a question for you. What does it mean to obey and maybe even more specifically, what does it mean to obey God? How would you answer that question? I would say that a good way to answer that question would be to follow God's commands, right? To trust God, to follow after Him and to do what He tells us to do. That would be obedience. We talk about obeying your parents too. That would be to follow their instructions and to listen to them, all right? And so today we're going to look at an instance where somebody disobeys God and there are consequences. Sin always has consequences. It means that something, uh, consequences doesn't have to mean it's a bad thing, but um, sin always has a bad consequence in our relationship with God and with other people. Sin always hurts those relationships. And sometimes we think we get away with it, but we really don't. Okay. And so today we're looking at one of the stories in the Bible that, that deals with that. So today we're looking in the book of Joshua, because Joshua is the name of the man that's leading the nation of Israel. Okay. So we're looking in the, in the book of Joshua, but before we actually look at our story, what do, I got his picture here. What do you think this is a picture of? Well, let me be clear. So this is a picture of a picture, actually. This thing over here is a, is a really old, it's called a plaque, it's a really old sort of painting or picture, sculpture kind of deal of our story and part of our story that we're looking at today. So if you look at that picture, what do you think maybe we're talking about? What do you think is happening in that picture? Who do you think is in that picture? All great questions, right? We're going to talk about all of that stuff. All right, we're going to talk about all of that today when we look at our story. And so, in order to understand where we're at today in our story in Joshua 7 and 8, chapter 7 and 8, we have to go back to what we talked about last week. Do you guys remember what we talked about last week? We talked about trumpets and marching and shouting, right? We talked about the battle of Jericho and how the nation of Israel walked around once for six days and then on the seventh day they walked around seven times and shouted and blew their trumpets and then the walls came tumbling down, right? That's what we talked about last week. And so we have to remember what we talked about last week because when God gave victory to the Israelites um, in the battle of Jericho, he told them, don't take anything. None of the stuff in the city, none of the stuff that's set aside in the city or valuable or shiny or, you know, things that look like they'd be fun to have, don't take it. Leave it there. Don't touch it. It's not something that I want the Israelite people to have. That was what God's command was. 
And so we start here in with that rem remembering the story from last week because basically what we're looking at this week is going to have to do with what happened last week, okay? So I want you to listen. I haven't told you what the sin was or what the problem was. Oh, do you guys remember what sin is? Sin is anything we think, say, or do that doesn't please God, right? So I want you guys to listen for what the problem is in our story today. What is the sin or the disobedience that you hear today, all right? Just keep listening for it, and I'll tell you when we get there. Hopefully, I'll remember to mention that this is what we're talking about, but it'll be pretty clear. So in our story today, Joshua and the, and the Israelites have taken over Jericho, and they're moved on to the next uh, city in the Promised Land, and, and they scout it out. They send some people ahead, and the people that go ahead um, come back, and they say, Joshua, this is a small city. We can do this. No problem. Let's, we don't even need to take everybody from the army. We'll just take like 3,000 people, and we can pull this off. So they take 3,000 people. They go up, and they expect to win and to have a victory and have an easy victory. But they don't. They lose. And they get run off by the people that lived in the city. And the city was called Ai. So if I go back to the other slide with our picture on it, you'll see that over here, these words are actually the battle of Ai. Ai is the city. It's a really interesting name for a city. But we have um, the, the battle of Ai. And so there's the first part of the battle hint, hint, nudge, nudge, something's going to happen, and the Israelites lose. So this big group, even though it's not everybody that could be fighting, um, goes and tries to conquer and take over the city, and they, they lose. They're run off. And so they come back to the camp, and Joshua's just so upset. He's so sad. He's, he doesn't know what's wrong. He feels like God isn't blessing them, and he's not sure why. He doesn't understand what's going on. And then he talks to God, and God tells him, Hey, somebody has disobeyed. All right? Somebody has disobeyed. So I'm going to read just one verse from chapter 7 of the book of Joshua. It says, The Israelites acted unfaithfully in regard to the devoted things. Achan, son of Carmi, the son of Zimri, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took some of the things from Jericho. So, God points out to, to Joshua and helps Joshua to find who it is that's taken the things and disobeyed God, right? So there's our problem. Somebody disobeyed, somebody sinned against God, and it's already resulted in some people getting hurt, okay? They were going to battle, but they were hurt. There was a consequence there, because a bad consequence, because of uh, Achan's sin. That's the name of the, the man that took some things that he shouldn't have taken. And so God points it out and, and points him out for Joshua. And there's punishment there for Achan. And, and then God says, here, here's how you're going to go ahead and battle this, ba the city of Ai. And I will give you victory in the battle. And so they go and they do it again. And this time they win, right? They take over the city of Ai as God promised them. But it cost uh, the sin of Achan cost not just him punishment, but it cost this consequence of the whole nation of Israel was set back because of his sin. It hurt his relationship with God, Achan's relationship with God, and it also affected other people, the nation of Israel. And there are people that died in that first battle because of the sin of Achan. And so this is just one of those reminders that we see as we follow God, if we listen to him and we obey him, God blesses us. That our statement for today is simply this, that sin separates us from God. And because of Achan's sin in our story today, we see that he is separated from God and he's separated from the people. There's that consequence in those relationships. And so when we talk about our relationship with God, we have sin, right? And God sent Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our sin. So that way we could place our faith and our trust in him. And that's really important for us to understand because we have to understand that in order to have that relationship with, with him. 
And so that's the awesome thing that when we look in the Old Testament, we see um, obedience and disobedience. We see the same thing in our lives today, but we have Jesus Christ and we know who God is and how much he cares for us. And so we know that we can trust him and follow him just as Achan should have done, but he didn't. And there were those consequences that we talked about today. So I want to encourage you this week uh, to seek to obey God and obey God in obeying your parents and following instructions of mom and dad or whoever's at home, following instructions of teachers or other people. Maybe when you're here at church, you're, you need to follow the instructions of the other adults in the building or whatever it might be. Um, I hope that you're able to do that this week. I just want to take a minute and pray with you and then we'll be all done. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for today. I thank you for uh, the fun that we can have looking at your word and, and considering it uh, and, and how it affects us. And we thank you for um, Joshua and his example of leadership. We thank you for the nation of Israel and their obedience as a whole. Um, but we also thank you for the example of Achan and, and how we can learn from somebody else's mistake and sin and disobedience. And Lord, I pray that that would encourage us to live lives that are honoring to you. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening. and I hope you have a great week. We'll see you next week here at Virtual Online Junior Church. Bye.